So, it's a new day in the shop, and today we're going to be working on my 2021 Polaris Razor Pro XP. And we are going to be installing my new 32 inch megabytes on my new Tusk beadlock wheels. And I just got these rings back from Powder Coat. That's what I've been waiting on to do this. I've had the wheels for two or three weeks now, but I sent these off to be powder coated. So we're gonna get them mounted up and then we're gonna look pretty dang good. And we've also got a couple other things. We've got, I've got limit straps for the front. I tightened my suspension up a little bit to gain a wee little bit of ground clearance. And whenever the wheels leave the ground, they slam hard and I don't like it. So I got front limit straps. The back doesn't do it. And I also picked up this off of eBay and this is a parking brake so we're gonna get that installed too so I'm gonna get started on uh, wheels and stuff and show you guys how this is done so for starters uh, you don't have to use tire mounting stuff to slide on these bead locks I mean it will drop over it's tight though so I just put a little bit on the inside bead just to get it on there and then whenever you go to inflate them you want to make sure you do lube it up so it does slide on but this is just a tire and tube mounting compound it's just raw soap is what it is it's kind of slimy gooey looking I just take a little bit and put it on this bead right here on the wheel where it beads up on the tire I mean just so it'll slide across that wheel a little bit whenever I slide it on here Just like that she slides right down on there and then on her top bead you just want to make sure that you get it centered and pressed down on to where it sits flush like this the whole way around see how this one's up I gotta get that pushed on there there it went it's pretty simple just grab the beadlock ring set it on there Make sure you got some holes lined up. And I just use my quarter inch impact with a 3 8 adapter. It's 13 millimeter for the bolts. And then I like to use a inch pound torque wrench. Um, this one's 3 8 drive, it's Craftsman. Uh, the paper calls for to go around snug everything, then torque it to 10 foot pounds, and then to 20 for a final. And going in like a uh, from a 12 to 6 to 3 to 9 pattern, uh, I like to use the 3 8 inch pound one though. It's you do 120 inch pounds and then 240. So I'm going to start doing that. And you always want to make sure you start your bolts by finger. You don't want to just run the gun on them because you are going steel bolts into an aluminum wheel and they will cross thread and strip really easily. And that's the last one. When you're done with that, that's what she looks like. I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'll turn on the compressor and I'm gonna beat this up real quick. So again, with this tire soap, I know I already put a little bit on the tire, but I like to, especially on these ones, just rub a little bit right here on this inside bead where it's got a pop up over it, just so you know it's going on nice and easy. So whenever I have a stubborn tire like this sometimes, I'll just put a ratchet strap around it and ratchet it down and it'll shove that bead out to where it ought to seal and take air.
release that ratchet strap before you get too much in there or else it'll be really rough on you. And there it went. Bead seated. But uh, it is leaned up there. I think it's gonna look pretty good on there. So I'm gonna get the rest of those done and then I'll get to the limit straps and then we're gonna put the tires on. Now my buddy, he, uh, when his razor, he ordered his pre-mounted, which Rocky Mountain does that. That's an awesome, nice feature. But uh, so they, you know, send it, they mount it, they torque it, they do whatever. They shipped them to him, but they don't send you the paper that comes with this and where it says right here, retorque the ring bolts every 50 miles until 200 miles is reached. Nobody tells you that whenever you order it pre-mounted. So anyhow, he puts about a thousand miles on his and he took his beadlock rings off to have them powder coated at the same time as mine. We sent them out together. Whenever he went to unmount his, he literally could take the socket and extension and put it on and unscrew his bolts with his fingers because they left this literature out of the thing. So just want to point out one thing I almost forgot. Um, on your tires, the little yellow circle. You're supposed to line that up with your valve stem. Back whenever I worked at the tire shop right out of high school, they told us to do that because supposedly that makes it to where it needs less weights for balancing. One more thing I wanted to address before I move on is the reason I went with these tires. I absolutely love these carnivores. I mean, I, I can't complain about them. They've got a gob of tread left on them. The only reason that I'm upgrading to 30, I wanted 32s, these are only 30s. The only reason that I did not go with new carnivores is because of the price tag. These were over $300 a tire. Those were on sale. Uh, Rocky Mountain had them on sale. I bought all four tires for $600. So, that's why I went with that. So, next up, we are going to install the limit straps. Normally, this would be a straightforward, really easy process, but oh no, not on this bike. See, normally you would just go ahead and remove this nut, slip this on and tighten it up and do the same to the top. However, the top bolts, they put them in this way. So, I was just going to take the nut off the back of the top one and uh, hook it onto the back side and I could pull the bottom bolt because it's a lot easier. But because of these reservoirs, this would interfere with them on the back side. So it's going to have to go on the front. So I'm going to have to jack this up to full droop and try to pull the front bolt out to get this to slip on and then once I let it back down to where it's squatted like this I can just pull the nut off and put the other end on here real easy so I'm gonna get it jacked up and hope that this will work here All right, let's see if we can get this in here oh yeah yep there we go it broke it loose And it's off. Get my little pecker and peck it out there. And I got it out. I'm gonna put some never seize on that before I stick it back in there. Basically, the only thing I'm doing is just slipping this on there and sticking it back up in there. I'm gonna slap some never seize on that, like I said, and then I'll shove it back up in there. It went in way easier than it came back out. Uh, so, I'm just gonna run it back on there with the impact. Tighten her up. I'm gonna start it by hand, of course. Actually, before I tighten that all the way up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this down and compress it and I'm gonna put this front one on, this other one, and then I'll jack it back up so that this strap is as straight as it can be, and then I'll tighten them both up. I'm 
boy. How am I gonna make that happen? I know I measured this right. They said measure eyelet to eyelet at full droop in order to get the right length and it called for a 25 inch because they measured 27, I think it was 27 and a half eyelet to eyelet at full droop. So what am I going to I'm going to have to compress this somehow. Well, I'm going to figure out how to compress this real quick. So, I figured out what's going on here real quick. Uh, I just remeasured everything, and it, it is 27 and a half full droop, and it does call for 25 inch, and this is a limit strap 25, but this 25 inch limit strap only measures 24 inches right now. So, I've got to compress that down really good in order to make that fit right right now so i don't know if i stand on the front bumper if it might get it down there far enough i'm gonna try something so in order to get this down here far enough to do it i literally am laying on the hood and it's still and just everything to get it on there so then I gotta hurry up and grab the nut and put it on I lost a lot of downward travel with that that's with that strap on there let me get back here so that's what it does for you it keeps everything from dropping too far I think that these are gonna stretch a little bit and that will be what I want but it's gonna have to be worked in first so I'm gonna tighten these nuts up and do the other side real quick. So like today is just not my day. I'm having all kinds of screw ups. So I am going to end up putting this on the back side. It will clear the reservoir. And the reason I'm putting it on the back side is because of this right here. This big lip on this ain't gonna let this go back on there far enough. The back side's flat and the top there's nothing in the way. So I'm gonna move this limit strap from here to here so now the only thing is for putting this on the bottom is I have to jack it all the way up pull the bottom bolt out and stick it in first because it's the side with the bolt in the back so I'm gonna stick this on here I want to set it down I'm probably gonna have to put it get out the spring compressors and compress this spring so I can get this in there enough by myself to get the limit strap up onto the top bolt so I'll get this bolted back in here and then I'll show you what that looks like. So normally on these spring compressors, all they do is they got, right here is what it looks like. They got these two teeth and they just slide over and you tighten the bolt and it pulls your spring together. Normally you'd use one on each side. I'm thinking that considering I'm just needing to squeeze this down just a little bit to get up in there that I can get away with just using one, I'm hoping. Anyhow, I'm gonna find out real quick. Alright, I want to see if that gave us enough clearance or not. But what I ended up doing to get enough clearance was put the spring compressor on the other side, then jack the razor up and slide the block under just this wheel, let it down, push down with everything I had on the front end to get it to settle down, and now I can slide this limit strap on uh, with ease. I've got plenty of clearance in here uh, to do so. I can literally just reach my hand up in here and it's on just like that and we'll start the nut and then i'm gonna get the impact and tighten that up and then i'll repeat the steps for the other side so let me shed some light on you in my life today the other side didn't interfere this side it's just barely but it's touching right here on the back of this reservoir side and I don't know enough about shocks to know if you can take this loose and reclock it a little because if it was literally turned up to about right there where my finger is it wouldn't interfere with anything so 
So I'm going to have to do some research and see if something like that's possible. Because the shock's not hard to get out. Um, if it's able, if I'm able to re-clock this, and that's what I'm going to do. Because I do not want to rub a hole in that or break it somehow and have to replace one of those. So I got the shock out of there. And near as I can tell, this is not made to this like it is. So I don't know if maybe if I just a little bit of brute force if I can move this or if I'm going to end up having to loosen this up just to smell because I don't want to lose any pressure or any thing like that. I just need this to twist a little bit and it, it does move on there. I can see it does. And yeah, it, there's a little notch there, but there's no indication of any kind of a key or anything holding that. Actually, I see what that is. That's a uh, snap ring. So if you unscrew this down, you can slide this down. So if you unscrew this, this would slide down and you could pop that off and then this would slide off. So yeah, I should be able to, I might be able to just uh, stick this in the vise and give her a couple heave hose. I might be able to spin this around there. I'm going to. Give it a try here. So all I did was loosen this ring up a little bit with channel locks and then I could pull on that and I put a mark on there. I moved it just a wee little bit so far. I need to go about another quarter of an inch and I'll be good. And I just barely cracked this loose, just enough that I can move it. I think that'll do it. Like I said, I just barely loosened this ring. This ring here, I just barely loosened it. And then there's the mark where it started. There's where I went to. And that should be plenty. And it shouldn't interfere with anything. I didn't lose any kind of gas or fluid because it it was really tight to turn that still. I, I left it tight enough that whenever I was pulling on this, it was actually tightening this ring back up. So that's what I wanted. So I'm going to slide this back in the bike and make sure it's going to work. I want you guys to see what I was dealing with here. Before, you couldn't even see that strap. Now, it's out of the way. It ain't touching nothing. It ain't touching nothing up top. And that reservoir is just perfect. I can still get to it with my fingers if I need to adjust it. So... I'm going to call that one there a win. Clearing's clearing. And then that is clearing. So I'm going to button this up and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's completely done. So there she is, guys. They're sitting at ride height. Normal. And what it's supposed to do. go and limit how much those drop those used to drop way down put way a bunch of vine on them axles and everything they would hit hard too so now it's going to come tight on the strap i'm assuming like i said they're going to stretch a little bit to give me a little bit more downward clearance i mean because it's not a whole lot but that's that so i just want to show you guys something else I am, I'm just really happy and pleased with the way this Pro does everything. Uh, I mean, I've owned the Razor 800. I've owned a couple 1000s. We've had a Honda Talon. And by far, this is the machine that I am most pleased with. Uh, power, ride, everything. Anyhow, those uh, the Razor I just did the other day has half the miles on it that this one does. And I had to put brakes all the way around. I just want to show you that I've got 2,100 miles on that, and those brakes are good to go in the front. I haven't checked the rear yet, but I'm just way happy. Now, I, I do know that part of that is the fact that this brake pad is, like, way longer than the ones on the 1,000 in the front. 
They're, the 1000s are probably only about that long. So it's another third of a brake pad longer. So maybe that's got something to do with it. If it does, that helps. So to add to the brake thing, just what I kind of figured, my rear ones, they ain't got much left. I mean, they'll get me through a couple rides before I got to change them. But let me know in the comments if you think that the reason that these, uh, these brake pads, because these are identical to the ones that are on all four corners of a 1000. You know, if you think that the bigger brake pads is what's helping not wear out. And if it is, then maybe Polaris needs to step it up just a little bit and put that on all four corners. Oh, yeah. She's looking good now. Like I said, I wish them was carnivores. But I'll go with the Tusk. 32s. Freshly powder coated orange bead locks. She matches now. She looks real good. I need to give it a bath. So, moving on to the parking brake. Alright guys, this next part of installing this uh, parking brake should be about as simple as it gets. Um, should just be pull that nut and that nut right there off and slide this on and reinstall the nuts. That should be the these nuts are 15 millimeter, by the way. And that should be that. And real quick, the way that this is supposed to work is whenever you push the brake down, you should be able to slide that over and that hold the pedal. And uh, this thing's in neutral. So, oh yeah, I can't move it. I'm shoving it pretty hard here. Yeah, I can't move it at all. So that's pretty good and then it's got a spring on it so to release it you just literally push the pedal and it's back out of the way so that's going to be pretty handy that there's going to be a park saver for sure so that uh that includes the parking brake install i'll show you guys one thing that i did to this pro i think it's kind of neat um because it's really So I've got the audio upgrade kit in this, which includes the subwoofer and these two speakers behind your head, plus the two in the dash um, with the ride command. And whenever we'd sit around, sometimes just playing music, this thing's battery wouldn't last at all. So I pulled one of my tricks out of my sleeve and I upgraded to a car battery because these pros just have little ATV batteries in them. Um, I had to cheat a little bit and I lost my seat slider, but I'm the only one that drives this thing, so I don't really care. But I took some uh, 2 by 2 uh, square steel and mounted my seat brackets directly to it, and that got the seat sliders that were down here out of the way and gave me plenty of room to put this car battery in here. And this is a 4260. It's a Royal King battery. And that made a world of difference. Uh, they had a kit to where you could put two four-wheeler batteries in here, or ATV batteries. And it was like 200 and some dollars. I only paid $80 for that one big battery, and I'm, I'm done. I have no more issues, zero issues. So, that concludes uh, working on the Pro today. So... If you guys want to, go check out the rest of my videos. If you like this kind of stuff, like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.